Uh, we're back on Real Boxing Talk. CS. Clean <laughs> shaven. Clean <laughs> shaven boxing talk. Um, <laughs> trying to go from the Santa look. Santa look was driving me crazy. We had to go back to being me. Um, welcome, folks. This is going to be interesting because there is a, a thread amongst threads. Things that we've talked about, and it's year end. All this stuff that we love to talk about is kind of coming to a head now and splintering off in different directions and coming back together. So let's start with this. We were speculating and have been speculating for a while, especially after the, the loss that Lomachenko suffered, whether that was it, whether we'd seen the best, whether there really was a best, whether we just were, it was a smoke and mirrors, what was going on? Now, the question is, was Richard Comey a solid guy? He, the guy that he used to be. I think Comey showed up okay. But he got showed up by the guy that showed up by Lomo. So, John, we'll start with you. How did Lomo look, and why did he look that? Well, it's it's all speculation. They're, they're always talking about injuries and all that. I'm sure that played a bit of a part. But I, he just looks refreshed, and he looks recharged. Looks, He wants his titles back. Um, as I said a little while ago, perhaps the loss to Lopez, because he said he was really depressed about losing, and that's a very honest admission from somebody like him. So that's good. That means that he's really took a look at himself. Maybe there were some things he didn't like, so he went back in. He worked really hard. He came in super sharp. He looked like his old self. He, I love, you know, I love the way the guy fights with all the angles and the spin and jumping to the right and. And he never really got clipped solidly by Comey, which was the biggest danger, really. He pretty much won every round in my book. Uh, wanted the fight stopped late, didn't get it. But, and then he just kind of cruised to a decision. That was fine. But he just, he's top of the line. See, I still think he's the best fighter at 135. I don't think he's, he's back. Last week we said, who's the man? I watched him and I thought, he, he's the man. He might have lost, which you, you think, but... Football teams, baseball teams that are the best teams, they occasionally lose. So he lost. He might have learned something. He might come back better for it at 33. But uh, this is this will make Charles, if you didn't see this, Charles, I'm smiling because I think you're going to smile at this. That, that young whippersnapper, Shakur Stevenson, said, oh, I'll, I'll go up to 135 or, or whatever to, to, to fight Love with Jacob. And he said, I'm, uh, he, I, he got, he got, I'm staying at 135. I'm going to fight Cam Moses. <laughs> I want to fight Cam Moses. So I thought that was interesting. That So he's obviously very aware of his, his shadow there hanging in the back, the youngster that is so good also. So, But, no, it was a great night for Lomachenko. He was solid. He was sharp. He was right on point, and yeah, it was just, it was very impressive. He, he, like I said a little while ago, just sometimes you don't know what, what a guy's going to bring, and he's, the last two fights, he's brought his old self, and, and even even better than, say, a year ago, so he's he's back, for sure. Well, it, it was interesting to see that, that he had recreated, or created, I guess, the angles that he had been using before, because I saw Tony look up and went, where'd he go? Oh, he's over here? Uh-oh. Where... In the previous, well, you know, especially in the fight that he lost, we didn't see that. And again, that's whether you're injured or hurt or whatever, you know, but he just didn't have that movement, that 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 kind of dynamic that we're used to. Is that something that was Comey or was that Loma? No, I want I mean I like Comey. I think Comey's a hard hitter. I mean, he might have better uh better uh uh skill set earlier in the day, but he still could punch, man. That dude can punch. Right. He can be a lot of people, even at this point right now. So I'm going to give a, a more, little bit more credit than uh, uh, Lomachenko because of the factor that, as John said, he moved real well. You said, too, he uh, had those angles. So I'm going to give him that love because sometimes, as John said earlier, that uh, when you lose, it makes you refocus. It makes you look at things differently. It makes you get in tune. You're like, okay, yeah. And, and the thing, too, that we said before that we don't want to – People don't want to accept these in these days and time. You you are allowed to have a bad night, okay? I don't know if, if it happened or whatever, but you can have a bad night. And I'm not saying that uh, Lopez didn't be in square and square, but it wasn't his best performance. I'm talking about Lomachenko. So now he's in the point where he had took on a, a formidable opponent and, and he got his hair right. So... He was a low more of old. Oh, what does that mean for down the line? We'll talk about that later. But for right now, it's very impressive. And uh, yeah, I mean, so 
We'll see what happens. He's a he's a player in the game. I don't think he was ever out of the game. It's just we always you know how we do in these current times. We go off the last thing that we saw. And we saw him, uh, and then we, we saw him lose, and then we saw them the the, uh, the excuses. And we don't we don't like excuses today. Today's fans like. Nah, you know what I'm saying? With, you know, I mean, I'm sure Lopez is thinking the same damn thing right now. So, right. you know, so I think that being said, but no, I thought it was a great performance by him. He did what he wanted to do. Only thing I kind of, that really bothered me a little bit was when he was trying to talk to the corner, like, stop the fight. Dude, it wasn't all that for real, though. I mean, I, in my opinion, I mean, and then why, if, if it was all that, why didn't you finish him? Because dude kept coming out. Come and kept coming out. If it was all that, you should knock his ass out. I mean, I get what he was trying to do, trying to be the, you know, I guess he's trying to be the good guy. He's in trouble. You really want me to hurt him? Other people did not this ass out. Excuse my language, uh, children. But uh, you did not, and, he, and it went the whole way. So that was a little bit showboating on this part. But, I mean, I don't hate him for it. I I, I mean, it's okay. I, I understand what he's trying to be, the, the gentleman. Give me a break, bro. Really? <laughs> well, I, I think. And, and John, correct me if I'm wrong. I think what was going on was this guy doesn't have an answer. I mean, why are we still doing it? And as we were talking about something else earlier, we won't mention the But as we were talking about earlier, as long as there's time on the clock or in a clock with game like baseball, you have an opportunity. And so unless you can dominate the guy to the point where all right, I can end this whenever I want, which as Charles said, he wasn't doing. He was just, and it wasn't like he was toying with him. He was just the dominant fighter. I, I, I agree with Charles. Do you agree with Charles? And that's like, look, just fight the fight. If you, if you can take him out, make the guy, make everyone else make the decision to stop the fight. But don't just say, I'm, I'm tired of whipping on him like this. But yeah, he doesn't have a chance. I, I didn't see that either. Yeah, it was a little, uh, two things. When I was watching, I thought it was a little arrogant and and a little presumptuous. Uh, and I think he thought that Comey was more hurt than he was. I'll give him this. And he thought, I'm just going to pummel him for the neck until you stop it. But uh, Comey recovered quickly. He was not wobbly. He got up. He, he, he was good. So I think, yeah, he jumped a little bit. The only guy I ever saw do that and get away with it, and it was right, he was right, was Muhammad Ali against uh, Jerry Quarry in the second fight, if you remember, he had, but he had been beating up Quarry for rounds and rounds, and Quarry was wobbling, so it's a little different, but it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen, because nobody would ever do it, remember, he's hitting Quarry, and then he looks at the referee, and he goes, that's that, I, I ain't hitting this guy anymore, stop the fight, and he liked Jerry Quarry. So it was, it was right. It was over right then. And he just walked to his corner. Their, their referee hadn't even called the fight. So that was the only thing that popped in my head. Because when they said i never seen that, I'm like, well, I saw something like that once. But, yeah, this is going back 100 years ago. But, uh, yeah, I, he jumped the gun. He, 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 he tends to do those things kind of. And I think that's because deep down, he, he thinks he's bo- a boxing god. I do. I think he thinks that. He tries to cover it up a little bit. But it comes out like anybody, you know, you know somebody who's an asshole and, and they try to cover it up and then bolt, it sneaks out, <laughs> right? So I think it got out and then, then he went back to business and he, he, he just, he didn't even really seem like he was trying to knock him out after that. It was just like, okay, he got up. I'm just going to box him the next three rounds. Now somebody wrote that, I oh, just took pity on him. Nah, I don't buy that. And, and, and that's, that's an insult to Richard Comey who, who got up and came out in the next round and was firing bombs at him. So don't don't say that about Comey, because Comey is class. Everything he said after the fight, everything he said before the fight, I mean, I loved it. They both acted like adults before the fight. So yeah, it, Lomo is Lomo. I mean, he's had a lot of success all his life. You know, he's like the guy you play one-on-one and he's kicking your ass and he's talking to somebody on the sidelines while he's kicking your ass. You know, and you're like, ah, I'm gonna get this. And then you might sneak up and get him because he's so cocky about it. So. Uh, really learn from this that part no but I, I I like what we said earlier I think this has made him the loss to Lopez maybe really recharged him and he's better now than he than he was before the Lopez fight the guy that you're playing he's talking to his girlfriend ordered pizza the building he's like dude I'm still here yeah um and, and I think what happens is we forget that Richard Comey was the bell of the ball there for a bit you know it's like well since he hasn't been that guy for it's been what three years, two years, 
if we look at, we throw the pandemic years out of there, it really hasn't been that long. So we tend to forget, as we talked about last show, all these other people in vision that are there. You know, oh, I don't even know this guy. Who they get? Where they get this bum from? It's like this bum used to be really good, and to just dismiss him like that. Yeah, I thought that was a little, little weird. Um, I was thinking I could be wrong about this. Didn't was it Larry Holmes was beating the crap out of Tex Cobb, but you're like, well, you're not knocking me out, so he's gonna have to keep hitting me. Or, or somebody was beating up on Tex Cobb and was like, so, you know, I'm not quitting. And you're like, do I do I need to keep doing this? You know, there's I think no you're right. Yeah, I think yeah. Larry Holmes. Yeah, and Howard Cosell was going nuts. He never did another fight after that because they wouldn't stop it. Right. Right. And yeah, Dex Cutthroat just got an iron, iron yeah. jaw, you know. And, and Larry Holmes was tired of beating him up. Yeah, probably was just I, I can't hit him anymore, right? But he wasn't going anywhere. He wasn't hurt, yeah. and he was throwing he punches. So you know, as a referee, that's what you said, Frank. Right. Is that the point where you go, uh, this guy can't win? But what happens if he lands a haymaker? Mm-hmm. That's right. the question you got to ask him because he's still coherent. Yeah, he's not defenseless. I was hurt. I don't think <laughs> when he got stopped once. I couldn't believe it later in his career. Got, I was like, what did he throw it? He never, I never even saw him wobble in his whole career. And he got hit with a bomb. So I, I don't know. But yeah, yeah, I remember. I was, it was on television, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And, and right. That was, I think, Costell said, I can't do any fights. Yeah. All right, Charles. So take us through the new 130, 135, 140 mix now. How, do, how does this change the dynamic, or does it change the dynamic? I don't know if it changes it. I just think it won't. <clears throat> at 135, it makes, uh, you know, makes Lomachenko definitely a player, right? And somebody that you can look at and you go, yeah, I, I can look at him. And, and But then it's it's almost like a bar beware, right? Because it's like a lot of these young guys swear that they're ready, but he's been through the mix. Uh, Lopez had to go through the mix, and Lopez got surprised. You know, whatever's going on, depression, uh, illness, whatever, I mean, heaven forbid, but it's what it is. So he knows what it's like now to lose. Uh, you know, Kambosis is right there. Um, one thing I will say at 135, I think some of these young guys, the uh, the, uh, the Ryan Garcias of the world, right, even uh, Devin Haney's, guys like that, um, they're winning, right, or, you know, Haney won. But I think, I just want to say, buyer beware. I think when you just going off of some something where you just think because you be the guy that you know that everybody thought you should be, and he was a little older, you mess around with that Lomachenko, man. You better be ready. Because I'm just saying, it, I mean, when you that experience goes a long way. He's no he's no chump. And then even if you were to fight like Kome, right? You got throwing bombs like that. If you come in there thinking because you cute and your dad told you great after 19 fights, you know what I'm saying, 22 fights, that you got just down. You might want to be careful because that's where it's dangerous. Um, same thing can be said about um, somebody that's fighting Tank Davis, right? And a lot of people think that they box and they can beat Tank Davis. But I think it's only a few people that can do that. Um, and then Tank Davis, too, uh, going around to the point where he fights somebody that really is a skilled boxer and understands how to stay away from him and can del- deliver power back. There's holes in everybody's game is what I'm trying to say right. at 135. But to think that one guy can just run up here and do whatever is one thing, too. And then at 130, as you mentioned, um, I'm going to let John jump on this, too. I don't want to spoil this. I'm going to let you guys talk about that. You know, uh, uh, a lot of people do not want to hear the, the, the wrath and the smoke of Shakir Stevenson because they know he is one of the technicians that people should be afraid of. I'm not saying he's invincible, but he's a very smart fighter with, with a dynamic skill set that can cause a lot of problems. And then like you mentioned up 140, Josh Taylor. and everything. I think there's still a lot for people to prove. I'll say that. But I think we can have a lot of interesting fights. But again, I think what you're going to find out is everybody running their mouth saying what they want. Of course, everybody's going at the Cambosis, right? Because they think it's easy. But uh, a lot of people, a lot of these fighters, again, buyer beware. Because while you say certain people have been picking their opponents, if you make the wrong choice, you can find yourself going to the back of the back of the, 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 the room, going to the back. Because one thing we know, if nothing else, that there are some very 
talented fighters and you running your mouth and you boasting and telling how everybody how great you are and how you'll fight anybody is not going to be the difference when you get in the ring. So I hear a lot of talking and that fighters right to say what they want to. But uh, yeah, you know, you got to be careful because you make the wrong choice. And the way it reminds me of, uh, I'll just say that I'm not going to compare the errors because there's no way y'all will. But as far as the te- finally some talent, connecting the way it is, you know, I remember when when we were, uh, uh, we we were not adults, John. You, you can in, you're included in this too. You were not an adult. But uh, I remember back in the 70s, man, where we were in the heavyweight division. And for as great as Muhammad Ali was, great as Joe Frazier was, and so many others, they weren't talking a lot because you turn around and you could get a Ken Norton breaking your damn jaw. It was that talented. And I think this group coming up here is not as talented, but it's damn show close. So a lot of talking being done. In the end, it happens in the ring. Well, I'm, I'm going to take John back a step to go up. A, now, let's go back. And I did. A, I actually did a little research. Let's go back a couple of years before. And look at this era, 130 to 135, 140, whatever. And some of the names that were out there, and even maybe going back to 136, that were the guys that we were going, oh, my God, you got to watch this fight. Oh, my God, you got And names like Josh Warren, Carl Frampton, the guys that we said, they're the guys that run the roofs. Leo Santa Cruz. Gary Russell. Gary Russell, Jr., right. These are the guys that we have to watch out. And, and we said, well, now we don't talk about Josh Morris. Why? Because he's not talking about him. You know, and we talked about Josh Morris a couple years ago. Like, this is a, a staple of the division. So what we're seeing is, the, and, and I'm not saying these guys can't fight. But what I think we're seeing is a flavor of the moment of this sounds good now. And Tiafima Lopez is great. Okay. Oh, Cambosa, what? You know. We, we, we see the flash, and we don't we see the sizzle. We don't see the sun. And guys that are going to be there, again, Charles mentioned, I don't think anyone's going to argue with Kurt Stevens is going to be there. Which of these guys that we're talking about, these eight guys we talked about last week, are, are going to be there? Which of these guys are going to be the guy? Be, that you said? This, we, we can look at this in another couple of years and say, okay, They've got their their ticket stamp to be the next Miguel Cotto to go to the Hall. Of Fame. This is a guy we can say this is someone who's going to be there. It's just not something something in the news, you know. We we said, oh, Josh Warren, we, he's a can't miss. Which one is really a can't? Well, Warrington, see, Warrington was a hard sell for me. I, I had a hard time with him until he beat Frampton. Then I started to believe in him because I couldn't believe what a guy with like six knockouts then was that good. He was good, but I, I didn't think he would beat Carl Frampton. So he surprised me when he beat him. He 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 was a lunch pill guy. He was he worked harder than anybody. And, and then he got knocked out. And then it was like, okay, uh, was it a bad night or, or or is he peaked? So I, I never thought of him in that category. Like I I always thought that if Gary Russell fought him, Gary Russell would beat him hands down. No no contest. See, it was always, to me, it was always the most, I always look at what I think are the most talented fighters, and I always, back at that weight around there, I was like Leo, of course, but I, Gary, Gary, Gary Russell was always the number one guy to me, because every time I saw him fight, I was always somewhat wowed by his ability. And being a witness to him when, they, when Lomachenko and him fought, guys, that was about the coolest thing I've ever seen. Because <laughs> they were like little fireflies buzzing around. <laughs> And I thought, how is he going to beat Gary Russell? I mean, the thing that was fascinating, back just to back to Loma for a second, was Loma Chico had lost his previous fight. So there was a lot of, to Salido, remember there's Salido, Salido? There was a lot of pressure on him to win. And he's fighting Gary Russell Jr.? Should have been fighting me that night, not fighting Gary Russell Jr. And the fight was a really competitive, fun not a bombs fight, just a style, sweet science, skillful. Crowd loved it, which was made me happy. I thought they might boo because there's no these aren't too this isn't a tough man contest. Right. This is skill. And 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 so I when I think about that division, he's always been 
the guy in the other, and the other guy that jumped ahead for a while was Kid Galahad in, in, in England. And uh, I can't remember his real name, but he, um, he just got knocked out in another upset in 2021. There's been all kinds of upsets. So the reason, that's the reason we always come back to Shakur, because the first time I saw him, I was wowed. So he's, he, he's the guy. He's the star. He's the top guy, even at this point, even though he's only had like 16 fights. I want to see him fight Gary Russell Jr. Ah. <laughs> you know? And you know he'd do it. What would Gary do it? Um, I don't know. Gary, I'm 30-something years old now. I'm not fighting that young kid. Forget it. But he might. So in that, in that poundage that you're talking about, it's everybody you've forgotten. You know, we got Oscar Valdez at that at 130. You got uh, Berger, you know, who Valdez knocked out, who's coming back here soon. I think what happens too, Frank, is I'm, you know, I'm listening to you guys like with Lomachenko. We're so wrapped up in when a fighter loses. Right. In, in the old days, when a guy lost, it was like, oh, he lost. He'll be back in the ring in six weeks. Yeah. Now a guy loses one fight and we're like, oh my God, he lost. But that doesn't mean that he's not as good as we thought. Joe Lewis got knocked out by Max Mellon. Did that mean that he was not that good? No. He got beat that night. He had an off night. He got beat. What do you do in the rematch? So you, I think it's just a nowadays short attention span, no memory, where you're, oh, yeah, he lost. Okay, well, then he must have been overrated if he lost. No, no. And, and back to Gary Russell, I'm jumping all over the place, but back to Gary for a second because things pop into my head. I, I'm disappointed in him in the sense that, in a way, even though he's done it his own way, which I really admire, and he should, it's his career, I think he could have got more out of his ability. He could have been bigger, in other words. But if he's content with what he is, that's fine. It's up to him. But me, my own personal opinion, I wish he had fought more. I wish he had fought more top guys because he's the other guy who beat Jojo Diaz. You know, who we just saw Devin Haney beat. And he beat him easier than, than Devin Haney. That tells you how good Gary Russell Jr. is. So we're always going to wonder about him. But, uh, yeah, the, the, the talent really, we, we say 135, 140, it really goes back. Because remember, Lomachenko started at 126. So he moved up. He's just a little guy, Lomachenko. So that's why he doesn't want to move up to 140. I don't blame him. I mean, 135 is max. He's a small guy, you know. And in a way, he's going to probably move up to 126 here pretty soon. So, <laughs> you know, fight the near, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, you know, uh, so that, that is, it's become, I'm done here, it's become where back in the 70s, like Charles said, it's not a segue for you, Frank. It was all about pretty much the heavyweights when we were younger. Now it's really about the smaller guys. They're the guys with all the talent. They're the guys who have us intrigued. They're the guys who we want to see the, the fight each other because they're, they're it. Well, I, I'm going to pump the brakes on this part of it because I think we've kind of stonewalled it. But and we'll get to one thing you mentioned here in a little bit. But I'm going to go to something that's on Charles. Uh, anyway, but I, anyhow. Okay, so something that's on Charles' background there. Something that happened over the weekend or last weekend or whatever. Um, we've got Thomas Sturge, and I believe that's Burke Sugar, right? Yes. Okay. We just had the uh, nominees or uh, the whatever, the uh, – the, International Boxing Hall of Fame inducted. Um, what does it take to be a boxing? What does it to? Would you say? Is Miguel Cotto is that a boxing? I'm not saying he's not saying. You go. Well, I'm not sure what it because I'm not sure what the criteria is, and I'm not sure what the criteria should be. Because it's a completely different sport. You can go your entire career without winning a title, without having a belt, and still be a great fighter. Mm -hmm. You can go your entire career and gaining multiple belts and have not faced anyone to prove that you're a great fighter. Or you just kind of, you got the WBO whatever belt and no one fought you. What in your mind makes, say, Miguel Cotto or someone a boxing fighter? Wow, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Oh, good. It. That guy, I'm glad it came up. Something good. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, you mentioned there are guys that have 
won titles and they never really fought anybody or they never really were challenged and they just kind of went through it. Not to say they don't deserve it. And I mean, because you can only fight who you fight. It's kind of like, you know, the eras. When you look at Larry Holmes, you know, people talk about how great Larry Holmes, which he was. But when you look at his, his, his resume, do you go, you remember when he fought the Ken Norton likes or something? I mean, you go, but you fight who you can fight, right? So I think that that's okay too. But I think for me is consistency, um, ability to win uh, either when you can, if you, it's like this, you have to be consistent. And if you're in an era where let's say the talent is not really that great, you should be dominant. And I think when Larry Holmes kind of showed you like, I'm going through these guys, some of them are pretty good, but I'm the A, I'm the A guy, right? I'm, a, I'm the A side. You got to be dominant. And then if you come into an era or a time where you're fighting and you're a tough, good fighter, a la Miguel Cotto, because, I mean, I don't think you're ever going to say Miguel Cotto was in the top 10, top 20 fighters of all time. You just won't say that. But Miguel Cotto will fight anybody. And he went in enough wars where he came out on top on a few of them, right? Some fights you didn't think he was going to win, and he did. And I think that's what it is. A, a person is willing to fight anybody, but all has been also has been successful because even though the names have been connected, I mean, all the, all you, without even blinking, people will say Manny Pacquiao is a Hall of Fame without even blinking, right? But a lot of people would never say Juan Manuel Marquez is a Hall of Famer. But if you really know the story and know that he probably was the the guy that was the probably the nemesis and the hardest opponent for Manny Pacquiao you damn sure we're giving love. So I just think that guys that you don't have to win every fight, but you had to come to the party to be willing to fight. And you had to have some significant wins. It's not all those, you're not top 10, you don't get in. I think it's, you know, you have significant wins, you fight anybody, tough as nail. And um, at that point, you decide how it goes. I mean, I, I think those are the things that are key to me when I when I look at the whole thing too. I mean, you may never hear Jerry Corey ever be in the Hall of Fame, and, and rightfully so. I can see that. But it's not because he wasn't tough, he wasn't hard. He just he came up at the wrong damn time. He came up at the wrong time. And since the most talented fighters in, in all of boxing history, dude only had legitimately nine losses. And, and a lot of that was Frazier, Ali. I mean, who the hell, who wouldn't be, who could, who was going to beat them? So I think part of it is, I, like I said before, it's just understanding you know, the heart of the guy winning significant fights. You can fight a lot of people, but if you never win, I just say this, and I'm going to leave this off the top of my head. I'll leave it right there. I'm about to drop this bomb. I'm about to run now. As I get out of here, I'm going to disappear. Um, and John, I'd love to hear your answer along with Frank's. Um, I'm thinking about something now too, but then again, this kind of goes along with what you said, Frank. As I watched the last fight, and what was going on, even though this guy was the champion, I would ask, and this would be a perfect segue, do you think he should be in the Hall of Fame when he's when it's all said and done and give him a little bit? Um, and that's uh, uh, that's Porter, Sean Porter. Okay, we're going to take a commercial break now. And um, see, there, there, there's, there you go. There's one of those guys. That you say, and we have said nothing but positive things about Sean Porter for the last two years. And there's one of those guys where you say, "Yeah, but." So, since you made you you did my job and provided the segue, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to let John take. It. Well, I, I was thinking that, that Charles might say Timothy Bradley. Oh, because yeah. he, he's another yeah. one that right. It's like. Should he or See? <laughs> should he or shouldn't he? Yikes. You know, he only lost a few fights in his whole career. I lost four fights in his whole career. <laughs> Charles, I can't focus on Charles Nether. Uh, you're asking me whether Sean Porter. Okay. See, this is the thing about the International Boxing Hall of Fame. It has loosened its requirements, and that's not a put down to like a Sean Porter or a Bradley. So when you're allowing Gotti to get in, now Gotti was a champion, but Gotti was not what you would call a great fighter, right? But he was a thrill a minute guy, 
right? Is that enough to get him in? Well, I wrote it in, in, in Intimate Warfare, yes. It did, because he had both of the, he, he was a gamer, he was gutsy as all hell, he wasn't the most talented guy, he reinvented himself after he got beat with Buddy McGirt, had those great 1950s style wars with Mickey Ward, right? Went out on a shield, whatever you want to say about Gotti, I thought he deserved it, I did. So, and then of course, Sloan gets in for the impact of Rocky. So that's what I, which I like too. <laughs> so it's loosened over the last 20 years. So I'll just keep, I'll stay where I am. Sean Porter and Timothy Bradley are very similar in the sense, both champions, right, right, ugh, right there, right? So my first thought with Sean Porter is yes. Okay. Well, my first thought was, uh, and then as I'm talking, my brain is spinning around going, yeah, he, he, he was a two-time welterweight champion. He, he, he fought a lot of the, the best guys. He, too bad he never fought Pacquiao. That's who he really wanted to fight. Uh, he, he'll get, if he gets in, it won't be like Andre Ward got in or something like that, but he'll, he'll get in. And so will Bradley. You know, Bradley, two division champion, the victory over Manny Pacquiao, I never, I watched it three times, never, never saw it. I, I, I tried, I even looked at an article, looking back, opened my mind up, but whatever, it's officially a win for him, just like Jeff Horn. So, uh, <laughs> you know, the thing about Bradley that is interesting is that people, so many people dislike him on ESPN. I, I like him because he's so opinionated. You know, I love it. He gives his opinion, he doesn't care. And that's the way it should be. It's like Andre and him are the good cop, bad cop. <laughs> and he'll disagree with Andre. It cracks me up. I got, nah, 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 that's, that's not, how, not how I'm seeing it. But the fight that he had with Provodnikov, if you guys remember that, because he fought that way because everybody was moaning and groaning about his victory over Pacquiao, and he was hurt. So he fought a dumb fight against Provodnikov. He fought Provodnikov's fight, toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And Bradley, you know, Bradley was no puncher. Right. He was not. He was just, he was determination. And Sean Porter, so, so I guess they're kind of, they are kind of similar. They, he wasn't a big puncher either, but he always showed up. He always, that's that, all of that criteria that Charles talked about. Bradley wins that fight on guts, and he's got a, he's concussed for months. You know, you're talking about we don't care about it afterwards. And he had no memory of anything for the longest time. I mean, I was like, oh, my God. I mean, that, we don't think about that while we're screaming that these guys are fighting each other, right? So I'd say yes to Bradley and Sean Porter. I'd say that they, they both should be – I see Charles down there. They both should be there, but uh, it's not going to make everybody happy. But the way it is now, like I said, and the fact that they laid it on the line every fight, to me, is, is enough – because of the other factors that I mentioned. Well, the thing I think is interesting about this, I didn't mean for this to dominate the conversation, but I knew as soon as I mentioned Hall of Fame, it gets to me. Because I love lists, I love Hall of Fames, I love things like that. And I, I liken the boxing one to the tennis one. Whereas I believe the only criteria is you had to win a major title. I'm not even sure if that's it. But when you look at the Tennis Hall of Fame, you go, Gigi Fandon? Well, Mary, Mary Pierce? Wait a second. And, and it's not that they weren't great players, mm -hmm. but in my mind, the Hall of Fame is for the greatest of players. Not just because you achieved greatness once, but because you had a sustained achievement of excellence. Mm -hmm. and, and from what we're talking about here, this means that you're looking at a Pauli Malinaji. Uh, no. Uh, no, no, no. I'm just saying. No, no, Did no. he ever win a title? Did he ever win a belt? Uh, yeah, but no. Okay. So, yeah, but I, had, I, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let, let no. me just say this, because now that 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 uh, that uh, uh, John put the put the put the uh, put the put the uh, the mess in the water, it, it made me rethink. <laughs> he put the mess in the water when he mentioned Gotti getting in, and I thought about Gotti. Then my whole mindset changed. So when he said Gotti's in, I'm like, okay, then that means Sean Porter should be in, in my opinion. Right. That means Bradley should be in, right? right. Yeah. But when you say Paulie Malignaggi. No. 
Nah, I mean, I mean, I, I, I understand. We they probably will at some point, maybe because they run out of people, whatever. Got it. But, but when you say the 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 the, the uh, things that we mentioned, or I mentioned earlier, the criteria, I don't see that out of him. If right. if, if Paulie Marginati gets in, Jerry Corey should get in. Um, that that's just my way I see that. Jerry Corey should get in. Paul, you won't put Paulie Marginati in there. Jerry Corey should get in. And, la- and as I get off this last but not least, there's this point is going over and over and over. I wish we could go back in time. But hell, we can still do it now. Now that I think about it, I'm going back to my matchmaker uh, abilities. Mm-hmm. Can we can we get Timothy Bradley versus Sean Porter? <laughs> that would have been great. We, we, I tell you what, we mm-hmm. can go to the next event. I'm sure they're both going to be there. And we can talk a little stuff on the side and just, I heard he was talking about you. No, I heard he was talking about you. Let's be back over here at uh, Concourse C and see what happens. But but your point is valid, and I agree. It's, this is this is the this is when you get to a subjective thing mm-hmm. that we think is an elective thing. You know, all the Hall of Fames are subjective. They're both done by the sports writers or whomever else based on some criteria. Mm-hmm. But as John said, the criteria has got to be loosely based. To keep people eligible, you know, well, we can't have Paul Horning in the NFL Hall of Fame. Why not? He bet on me. Yeah, that was twenty-seven thousand years. It's not a big deal. We got to keep this guy out. That guy. This. That, we can't. Bergie Jenkins in the, in the baseball Hall of Fame. What? Caught with drugs in Canada. Oh, all right. There are these subjective things that we throw in there just so we can say Barry Bonds is on his last ballot. But here we go with this one. And again, I, I, probably my, 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 is the name just popped up. I also thought, and I always do, Glenn Coffee Johnson. Is, is that a Hall of Fame fighter? No. <laughs> He's a Hall of Fame a lengthy career and a Hall of Fame of right. gutsy, but not Hall of Fame, no. Right, and, and there's the thing. Now, to me, it's a simple thing. When I look back at the span of time they were, and I always try and pick the prime, and never try and look at the before and the after, because some people hang on too long, got to, some people get in too early, got to. When they were doing what they were doing, were they the name you thought of in boxing at that position? Were they the first person that came to? Mind? Did I say blah, 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 and after I said seven names, did I say Roy Jones Jr.? No, Roy Jones Jr. came to mind right away. In all of boxing, not just whatever division. So that's a no you know. To me, those are the ones, the no-brainers are the ones that get in. It's the ones that you have to think about several different times. You go, well, I'm not sure. I'm not. If you have to think about it, they don't get it. Well, let me say that. Let me say this, Frank. The reason that the International Boxing Hall of Fame drives me insane, it's not that. It's the people. There's a, there's one person in particular that the fact that they won't even discuss it or act like it does, he doesn't didn't exist drives me crazy. And then there's one that I really liked when I was a kid who's not in the Boxing Hall of Fame, and I think he deserves it. I'll call, I'll start with the, the second one first. Is Mondo Ramos? I think Mondorama should be, it's just his career was so quick. You know, he was washed up because of all the drugs by the time he was like 26 years old. But before that, he was wildly popular. He was like the fourth Beatle. He sold out the Olympic, or won the title when he was 21, won it again in Venezuela when he was like 24. He's done by the time he's 26. But in that, that like seven year span, he did it all. Fought Ismael Laguna. I mean, and he was a great fighter in that time. And he never, as Carlos Palomino told me, he almost never trained. He trained like two days before the fight. Right. And then he'd be training on, on alcohol. So I, I think if you got Gotti in, he's got to be in. He's got to be in. And then the worst, the absolute worst, that just, I've been trying for a year and a half. I've got to be very good friends with his son, and and it just makes me sick. Is Harry Wiley, the trainer, who was Sugar Ray Robinson's trainer, who worked with Henry Armstrong, worked with a bunch of fighters, 
met Sugar Ray when he was an amateur. Now, you're going to say like everyone, well, Sugar Ray was a natural and all that. Yes, but Harry Wiley showed what a good trainer he was, and Muhammad Ali himself said that he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. A story people don't know is, is that Muhammad Ali Cassius Clay then wanted to work with him, not Angelo Dundee when he first came out of the pros, because he knew how good Harry Wiley was. He ended up with Angelo because Harry was already working with someone else, didn't have the time. But they did get to work together in a couple of fights, the Jimmy Ellis fight. Remember, Angelo worked uh, Jimmy Ellis's corner. That was Harry Wiley who was in Muhammad Ali's corner. And, and Ali said numerous times, he has to be in the Hall of Fame. They, they act like he didn't exist because it's Sugar Ray Robinson. Well, if you're going to use that criteria, then why is Angelo Dundee in? Yeah. And it just, it, it makes me, I'm, I'll get all crazy here if we keep going, because it's just, I keep posting the article. Why isn't Harry Wiley, or does he deserve? Yes. And it, it just, and his son, you know, his son is a great guy, and that's all he wants for his father is a respect. Hell, I asked him if he'd come on our show. He said anytime we want. So we can we can we can talk that anytime we want with him. But I just don't understand why they won't leave me look at it. I think Harry told me, Harry Jr. told me that he called him and talked to Ed Brophy, who's the president of the International Boxing Hall of Fame, who I've talked about. And he said there's not enough pizzazz around his name. Wow, that's messed up. Am I like, what? He's the trainer of Sugar Ray Robinson. How can there not be enough pizzazz around his name? The greatest fighter, in my view, that ever lived. He's his train. He's, he was with him all the way to the end. 23 years. Tried to get him to retire. So it's just one of those weird, I don't know, I don't understand. So that's where the, the respect or whatever you want to call it for the International Boxing Hall of Fame, for me, just goes. Well, and, and the thing that we run across, and we're going to get back to new stuff in a second, the thing that we run across, I believe, in these things, Charles is laughing because he knows he's just laughing because he's laughing. But uh, we, we understand that opinions matter, but sometimes the facts matter as much as opinions. And sometimes the facts are based on the opinion, which doesn't seem to make any sense. Okay, I'm going to throw one at you, Charles, and then we're going to jump into something new. Diego Corral. Hall of Famer or no? Wow, that's tough. That's tough. Um, I'm not sure. Flame burn bright, but it burned fast. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I had to dig a little more deeper because I mean, I need to. I don't want to. I know enough right. about him, but I don't know enough about his early career. Right now, top of my head, probably I'm right leaning the other way, and you probably know, but I don't want to do him a disservice. I would have to go deeper to see what he did prior to when we really got a chance to look at him. So I'm on the fence with that one. But then again, I mean, uh, but then, like you said, last one too, I'm going to throw at you. Just because I know this is going to make you pissed off and you wouldn't have to answer for this week. We can go next week so we can get into the new stuff. Adrian Broner. Anyway. <laughs> I made one comment about the man and now I got to live with that the rest of my life. I just said the name. That's all I said. I said, we can talk about it next week. I just said the okay. name. All right. Charles, Charles, real fast, Frank. You see how Frank's background is blurry? That's because he's got pictures of Adrian Broner behind him. He just doesn't want to admit it. That's all that I got, is. I got Adrian Broner tied up in the back room there. See, That's I knew it. it. But, but okay, but the, but the serious part of this is we look at guys and, and we look at the career as if the <laughs> career was <laughs> railed or whatever. There he is. And we see guys that were, I'm trying to keep this on the rim, that we've got guys that were dominant at a particular time. But how long do you have to, I, I noticed that one, I forgot which one, one of the Klitschko's just got invited in. Is that a, Klitschko's not a Hall of Fame fighter? I mean, I'm not saying yeah or no, I'm just saying that's one of the things you look at and go, right. huh, yes, I think so, but I'm not sure. Um, if you Rules of heavyweight division for a year. Okay. I oh, let's go. Oh, yeah. He's Hall of Fame. Right. Oh, for sure. So, yeah. But then you look at someone like, uh, I'm just pulling names out of the air here, fellas. I'm just thinking of like uh, a Kelly Pavlik. Only lost twice. Only lost twice. Yeah. I mean, and, and fought the people he had to fight to get there. So he's right there, too. He's right. 
you know, so. Entirely sure. That's one of the things we look at and go, I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, who am I? Uh, Mansfield's own Prince Charles Williams. You go, well, I don't know. But if you won a belt and you stuck around for a while and you only lost a few fights, I mean, there are so many other guys there that are just. Well, the guy that we are talking about, Joe Calzani. Joe Calzani. You, you know, he's he's in because he was never lost 46 and 0, but his resume is. Right. Yeah, exactly. plays on, but I can be honest, Charles. Right. I mean, I know what you're talking about. A little thin. <laughs> A little thin. Fighting those legends when they're past it. I mean, come on, man. Get knocked down by both of them. Come on. So but he'll he's, he'll make it because again he never lost. Never lost, right? Where but, is Carl Frotch? Well, yes yeah. and no. Probably I mean, he only lost to Andre and uh, and Michael Kessler. So you see, these guys are right there. A guy like Andre Ward, he's there. You don't even doubt it. But then those guys, Michael Kessler too. He's there's another exactly right. So and Charles is enjoying me not trying to laugh at that. But um, but there there are so many people that we go. It should be a difficult decision to make, and it shouldn't just be doors wide open. Here you go, you know. If I'm not even going to mention the Go Go's and the Rock and Roll, I'm just saying, you know, it's they were girls, but were they rock and roll? Ah, no, I don't know. No, so there's there's a thing. So it's not male female. It's rock and roll. You know, did they move the needle enough that that's what you say this is the exclusive group is? Well, it just goes back to what we started when I mentioned Gotti. See, I think things now that I'm sure there's probably examples of people that got in before that. that ooh, now he's the champ where uh, people got in that you were a little iffy about. With, but when Gotti got in, it was so controversial that it changed. There's Oscar. Now, Oscar is definitely in the Hall of Fame. No doubt about that. Uh, and it changed it where guys like you're talking about, Frank, Carl Frock, for example, where they wouldn't have made it if you if you started off, we're talking about just greatness. Joe Lewis, Muhammad Ali, Sugar Ray Robinson, those guys. Floyd Mayweather in, no doubt about it. But then those guys who were just their peripheral, you know, they're bumping up, they didn't make it. And maybe they just figured, look, we can't go that route because then it'd be too small of a Hall of Fame because if, if you want to get real particular about it, there aren't that many guys that are that, right, that great. So we have to open the door a little and let some of these other guys who who are close in. So they change the whole criteria and we have what we have now. Like Shane Mosley. The Shane Mosley who beat Oscar twice, once for sure, second time, eh, just my opinion. Does Shane Mosley make it in? Felix Trinidad, Charles. Yes. <laughs> I think so. I think he does. Charles is going to button up on that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's look at, and, and because this, this phrase bothers two, proof, uh, two future Hall of Famers. I love it when they talk about a guy that's played in the league for 37 seconds. Well, he's a future Hall of Famer. Anyway, two future Hall of Famers that are that are progressing along nicely towards what could be a read. We're talking about Nanito Dene. They both performed the week. And uh, the monster, you know. Is this the rematch we want to see? Is that for Carl? me? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say no. I, I couldn't I, I, No, I mean, I, I, I like what Dono did and was able to rebound and whatnot. But uh, I think we saw earlier that he's getting older. And, and um, I'm not saying to take away from who he is as a fighter. He would not take the fight and he would not go all in. And, and not to say that he didn't, he would not have a chance to win. But I think he's, he's older now. And I don't, I mean, just unfortunately, the fact that he's not who he was, um, I think would be very difficult. Not saying he couldn't get it done. It would be a hell of a look, a hell of a fight. And his face would be all over here. I mean, it's, I mean, it'd be all over. It would take a lot. It would be like, would, I think people would love to see it because it would be a Rocky movie. It would take something, a great performance, and he probably would have his, both his eyes closed when he was done, and, but he would win the fight. And I'm not sure if that's something I want to see. I'm not saying he's that far over the hill, 
but I don't know. I mean, you fighting other people now, that's cool. I mean, you know, you can do that. But, uh, 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 you know, I don't think there's a lot of Chocolatitos left, baby. I mean, I mean, it's just what it is. There's a reason why Chocolatito, Chocolatito, everybody can't do that. So I don't think it's a rematch I want to see. Um, like I said, I like to see the monster uh, come on up. There's a couple of people now that he can come get some. I mean, you okay? You've been playing around, and we like you. Everybody love you at your little your little play weight. Now it's time to grow man weight. And you ain't saying you got to come up to no damn 140, nothing like that. But there's a lot of people that can see you in other places, just a little bit more. You take a couple steps, which you're going to get into because you're going to grow normally. So I would prefer to see uh, the monster versus somebody a little bit younger and maybe somebody else that could give you more of a challenge. I love Donair. I always have. But I think we're starting to get out of the, the realm of, uh, of expectations and possibilities when you keep asking the guys so much, you keep doing the same thing over and over. I lie, perfect example to me, and this would be my last word on this, Manny Pacquiao. Is it that he's good enough to beat the good enough, but he's not going to be good enough to beat the Well, he, at 39, it's amazing what he's doing. By the way, obviously, Chocolatito just will be in the Hall of Fame. No doubt, no, no doubt about that. I don't think anybody have any doubt about that. And so will the mayor. He will be, like you said, potential Hall of Famers. Um, it's amazing what he's doing. Uh, the, fact, the problem is, is the first fight was such a good fight. Even though he didn't exactly come that close to winning, he did wobble the monster, which nobody had done. He broke his eye socket, which obviously, because he hit so damn hard. I mean, that body shot on Saturday night was just a thing of beauty that he, he landed. He just hit it. So he's going to have a puncher's chance. But other than that, I don't think, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with Charles on this one. I don't need I don't need to see it again. He wants it because he's prideful and and all that. And I understand it. He's got the perfect fighter's mentality. I want it. I want this kid again, blah, blah, blah. I don't think he can even do as well as he did in the first fight, to be honest. I think Inouye will probably stop him in the second one. Unless Inouye has dropped a little bit. He looked like his same self pretty much in his last fight. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it's – unfortunately, it's going to happen because – Unless he fights uh, Casmero, the other the other Filipino, uh, uh, which is, who's kind of got, insulted his wife, so he's got all the motivation in the world. Like him. So yeah, he did said something about his wife being his manager, put her, put him down, put her down. So he's got motivation to kick his butt all over the place. And that guy's a that guy's a monster too, in a sense, a, a, a guy with no technique and all that. But he's he's a hard hitter and he's. He's an asshole. He's like he's kind of like a Mayorga was. Remember how Ricardo Mayorga yeah, would be? Yeah, yeah. He'd solve everybody and uh, smoking cigarettes and telling that Os telling Oscar that he was gonna you know with his wife after the fight. <laughs> he was and Oscar was in fact Oscar for a second because I'm looking at him. He was legitimately motivated when he knocked him down and you watch the way he looked at him. You could see like okay, you happy now? You you got it, buddy. You you wanted it. You got it. So it was kind of cool. So they could turn that fight into something huge because it would be kind of a grudge fight. But unfortunately, Donier is, you know, Richard Schaefer is his, is, his, is his manager. And, yeah, see, I knew Charles would love that. And Richard will get him that fight because that's what Donier wants. It's too bad he can't step in and go, look, I, I know, but how could he talk him out of it? There's no way he could talk him out of it. So, Denier, we'll see it, but I'm with Charles again. I, I, I don't, I'll have to watch it, but who knows? Maybe Denier will catch him with that beautiful left hook and end it, but I, I, I think the chances are pretty slim. Well, but we're getting now to where we've universally acclaimed in a way is, hey, does he have to move up? The Tasman error, I don't think, is, a, is even close to remotely being or giving him any kind of trouble. So, in a way, is, I mean, Dodaire is going to be the, the best next fight for him unless he ventures up or someone ventures down or whatever. And if that's the case, Charles, throw a name out there for somebody who's looking for in a way to fight. So I'm looking me, at a couple. Let me, let me ask you this, because when we say move up, we lay like 120. We're talking about, can he get to 130? I, do you think he's built for 130? I don't think he's built for 130, because it doesn't, it doesn't mean he can't do it. Yeah, but, but he can get to 126, though. I didn't get to 126, yeah. I think so, yeah. Okay, well, you know, I know somebody can get to 126. If, if, if it came quick, 
Uh, it it, it has to happen within the next year and a half. Yeah, yeah. So I know somebody can get to one twenty six. I mean, okay. you can say I would say um, um, in two names first off the top of my head. If, if I'm way off, let me know, please. Uh, Gary Russell Jr. Please, that's what I was thinking. Ooh. Gary Russell Ooh. Jr. And? and and Shakira Stevenson. Right, and then you know who else possibly just as an interesting fight would be Leo Santa Cruz. Yes. Yes. You're fighting him. We got three names. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And said, yeah, Santa Cruz trying to come back at 126 against him would be amazing. So we got three three blockbuster names for you, Frank. Come Richard. on, 126 to see the numbers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now let's let, let's give that a quick little rundown, and we can cover that maybe a little bit later. All right. Let's start with Leo Santa Cruz, because at this point, my feeling is the opinion on him is Leo Santa Cruz is not Leo Santa. Cruz. Mm. Does Lewis Santa Cruz use because he ventured up and it didn't work? It's moving back down and trying to get there. So I don't know if you're going to say if you're the monster camp go. That's not the guy. We so I don't think you go after anyone who's just a maybe. So I, I'll, I'll throw that one out. That I could be wrong. I think if I'm Gary Russell Jr. and I'm not doing what I I'm just not just been fighting that. I'm not something to say, but now, well, I guess it depends on why I'm not interested in fighting that. If my interest in fighting is that it's too easy, that I need a challenge, there's a challenge. If my interest in fighting is, or lack of interest in fighting is that I just don't feel it, then that's going to be way too much of Gary Russell Jr. just to take off, just to take off. So by process of elimination, that's an attempt, attempt, I think we see Super Stevenson against the monster in the next year. Mm. Now, you know, you got it, Frank. Emmanuel Navarati is also in that weight class. They're, they're okay. And see, now I'm thinking differently than you. I'm thinking that if I'm in a way, since he's moving up, I would want him to fight Leo Santa Cruz first. I want to see how he does at 126. Because, you know, when you move up, Right. I don't want to take on the top guy right away. I want to take on a guy. And see, that's the other thing. You better not underestimate Leo. No. Remember, it's back to exactly what we just said. He got knocked out once. He's lost twice. Doesn't mean that he's completely washed up. I don't think he is. No. He could probably give in away problems. He's taller. He's got reach. Lost he's Paul, active. Yeah. He's active. He would, we will be wondering about this because of what Tank did, but I, you know, will in a way be the monster at 126. Now, so there's going to be that. And Gary Russell Jr. is too fast at 126. So it, 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 none of it would be easy. I love the Shakur thing, of course, but Shakur is, I think he wants to get up to 135. I mean, he, I, he'd fight anybody. We know that, but uh, he'd probably go, that little guy? Ah. So, you know, but uh, that's, this is the matchups are great. The one, that makes, the one that makes the most sense is Navarati. That's the one that makes the most sense because you have a champion who's not the guy, and that would be a belt you get on the way up. But again, there's so many different ways to go with that. And I'm just looking at how the camp to look at it and go, well, if we beat Santa Cruz, well, everyone's going to think, well, we beat Santa Cruz. Mm. Even though, even though yeah, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you guys, I'm saying, the general public would go, but didn't Santa Cruz just get knocked out last night? That's our our core mentality. So I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying it's true. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I understand what you're saying. Maybe the public may look at it that way, but I mean we just keep coming around to the point of uh Leo Santa Cruz moved up, man. He moved up and 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 his power did not go with him. I mean he was He's very impressive, and he, and he was giving Tank Davis the, the He sure was. Right. But he just didn't have the firepower. So I know the age we live in, but to, to just put him down because he lost to a guy that's bigger than him, a lot of people are having. At 126, everything is right. And and for as much as people want to uh, look at the last fight that Santa Cruz had, I think you're giving the monster too much damn credit, in my opinion. You, you, you are, they're taking down what Santa Cruz has already proven. 
you know, when he lost his uh, fight before, we know who he lost to. And then he, he lost, and he said, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get him. And he wins, wins the fight. And he, and he did do that. So at a weight that he's very comfortable, I think it make a lot of sense. Also, too, as you mentioned, it wouldn't be such a big risk for the monster either at 126 versus Santa Cruz because they're going off the height, too. They'd be believing that uh, he may not be the same fighter, right? You don't want to see Shakir Stevens. Shakir Stevens won. He'd be too damn big for him. And yeah. So they and 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 they won't they won't because you lose that it's like you lose all the luster okay and then they, they start looking at your resume because like when we put you in against a marquee guy you didn't show up now why are we messing with you so I think that I agree with you this Leo Santa Cruz thing too but uh, yeah Gary Russell's probably a little bit too bad so I think by default as John said that's Leo Santa Cruz because Cruz Santa Cruz wants to fight that one twenty six. Donair needs to fight if he wants to move up. Because as you mentioned, what was the other guy that you mentioned that he could fight? Uh, I, that would be a war. It would be, but but in regards to money and prestige, yeah. Leo Santa Cruz got has the name. Yeah. You want to do pay-per-view you want to do, pay -per -view and you want to do some numbers? Leo Santa Cruz is the fight because if you look at it that way, if you just enter, you want to see a war and you know. We, Put it on ESPN, uh, uh, the app, <laughs> you get about 100,000 people on pay per view, then you can do that. But if you really want some people go, you know, I'm, I might want to tune into that. Santa Cruz is going to bring that because people love Santa Cruz and they want to see that. And Santa Cruz has the, the bigger resume. So if I'm the monster, people, and you got something to prove, let's go see Leo. But don't, all I'm going to say, my last point on this, do not sleep on Leo Santa Cruz. He's not done because he lost to a, a hard punch and heavy hitting dude. You don't, 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 let's not disrespect him for that because he had one hell of a loss. That he was the fight that he was literally winning till he got dropped. Right. That's the point people forget. He was winning that fight. He was right there when he got caught. He had everyone worried in the Tank Davis corner. So don't take that away from him. He got caught. It happens, but don't, don't just rip that away like he got dominated the whole fight. It wasn't like that at all. Now, the question is. How are they going to – What what is the plan with the monster? I don't see a discernible plan other than, you know, wipe out that division with he's done. I haven't seen that they're – what they're trying to do. Who they're, again, lower weight's kind of tough because you only have so much marquee to deal with. But I don't know what else is going on. And, again, as you mentioned, the man did not rock can fight. So there are some guys out there that are – that we're looking at that are potential. Who do we bridge that to? But, yeah, I – you know, Santa Cruz, I'm waiting for another Santa Cruz. You know, Santa Cruz was on a good fight that's enjoyable. And as you mentioned, he was winning that fight. And if anyone tells you he wasn't, they don't know what to watch. So John's doing a little research there before you. Yes, I am. Yeah, no, I was going to look because I what I heard was that he, if he moves up first, he was going to move up to 122. And so I was I was going to look and see who we got at 122 that he, that he could fight if, if my computer will allow me to uh, not jump up to 126, but move up to like a uh, uh, super bantam weight or something like that and uh, uh, fight somebody in that division first. And then, and, and at 122, he's got, he's got Fulton who, who just fought Figueroa to a war. He's got Figueroa. He's only really got two names. And then if he jumps up to, like we said, if he jumps up to 126, he jumps up to featherweight. That's nine pounds, right? That's when we're really getting into the nitty gritty with Navarati and, and, and Vargas and Dogby and, and Mara, the guy who knocked out Warrington and Warrington. See, so now you're now you're really getting you're getting into that. It's making me smile because I'm thinking of these matchups. You're getting into these possible fights that would all be good fights. And that's the thing about the monster. I mean, we don't know what happens when he moves up. That's that's the unknown factor because. You know, Roberto Duran was knocking out everybody at 135, and then when he moved up, he wasn't really knocking out anybody, and he had to learn to fight a little bit differently because he couldn't count on his power as much as when he was a lightweight knocking out Ray Lampkin and all those kind of guys. So, well, the monster, the monster is very sound technically, though, so I know he would make the adjustments. But again, he's a little guy. You know, he's a tiny little guy. He's a jockey. So he just might not be able to bring bring that up. So that that's why I think 
what we thought, if they're thinking about Leo Santa Cruz as a tune-up fight, <laughs> that would really be a mistake, but it would also be something everybody would learn. If he doesn't, I don't think he, I don't know, because of, see, that's the thing again, Frank. Everybody remembers what happened to Leo in the last fight, so you're gonna, oh, he's going to knock him out. It doesn't necessarily mean that. Way. That's uh, the thing. I, I'm going to ask this question of both of you because we are of advanced age and, and weight. Um, <laughs> nine pounds doesn't sound. <coughs> excuse me, doesn't sound like a lot to me. It sounds like lunch to me. So, <laughs> excuse me, but in this situation, these guys. Nine pounds means a lot. Are we ignoring the fact that a 130 to 135, 135 to 140, 140 to 140, are we ignoring the fact that that difference means so much? No, we just think that they can do that. Charles, is, is there a reason why we think, well, he can he can just jump up to 150 and do that? It's, 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 they're at that weight for a reason. Are we missing something in there? We're, we're assuming Leo Santa Cruz can make the weight and go up and fight. Fit. Oh, he got knocked out. It wasn't big enough. Yeah. We're missing something. I, I think it depends on the fighter. I really do. And, and I think that, uh, I don't think it's just, it's, it's, it's not a cookie cutter type of uh, scenario, right? I mean, you could say some people can go up and, oh, he can make it and go up. But some people are not ready for that. They're not built for that. The body's not ready for that. We've seen all the times. How many times have we said on a number of occasions, damn, if Adrian Bronner would have just stayed down at 140? Or damn, he would have stayed, if he could have stayed at one, even if you don't make 135, stay at 40. Because 47 simply, he didn't have the, the power that we were looking for, or he didn't take it seriously one way or the other. So I think it depends on the fighter, the, their, their ability to uh, control their weight, and then also the ability to bring the power. So when you just mentioned about the monster, uh, you know, maybe he can't go that far up, 126, right? Maybe he needs to stay at 122. But I think Fulton's a hell of a fight for him. But I think, uh, getting back to your point, I think it depends on the individual. We want to put it in a cookie-cutter thing to say, you know, well, he 140, he shouldn't go up to 147. No, you can't say that. It's like, I mean, if if, uh, if a, uh, uh, a Terrence Crawford can go from 140 to 147 and handle it, depends on the guy, his training, whatever he's able to do with his body. Same thing, we're talking about Errol Spence Jr. Can he go from 147 to 154? Depends on the guy. You can say that about Canelo. One Canelo fighting at 147 at one time. Now you have 210 or whatever the hell he had. I'm just saying. So it depends on For the guy. Way. Yeah, it depends on the guy. But I think, I mean, you mentioned that too, but um, I think it depends on the guy. When you look at the monster, um, it might be a little small or whatever, but uh, they're not mentioning it because he got beat, but I like to see. Uh, I like the Fulton. Is a is a. I saw Fulton fight. I like felt Fulton a lot. Good fight. I think it'll be a good fight. But I'm gonna throw my man out there just because you want you want something real quick. He after he wins his next fight, he'll do it in six months. And 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 you want to get that is if you if you win, you just say he was old. But if you lose, then people gonna looking at you some kind of way. Let's bring my boy in there. Let him with it, Chocolatito. Let's go, baby. <laughs> He's got his free match coming up. Yeah, it's third fight. Yeah, let's, 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 throw, let's throw Chocolatito in with the monster. See what happens. <laughs> oh, that would be it. <sighs> well, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna throw some homework this time. Here's what we're gonna do because Charles mentioned he wanted to talk about this. Let's do this a year end thing. What we would like to see next, taking into account what's already launched. So you can't say we want to see blah, 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 if they're already fighting somebody else. So if we want to say we want to see Yusuf against uh, Deontay Wilder, well, no, those guys are already you know, assigned to somebody else. You can't. But if there's something that's not available, okay, okay, this would make sense. So maybe three or four. Because there are a lot of guys that aren't committed to anything right now. And so the, this plate is clean. So we would get the promoters and everybody together and say, here's what we should have. Blah, 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 blah. You find the dates, you find the venues, whatever. But here's what we think. We so there's our homework assignment. Okay. If you have anything that you like out there, folks, let us know. Get in touch with us and say, hey, here's what I want. To do. Or here's another thing I want to think about as well, folks. I know we rambled about the Hall of Fame a little bit. 
give us and don't be mean about it. Give us the they should be in, they shouldn't be in kind of list that you have. Because let's face it, we all have our own subjective ideas. And there are some people we think, ain't no way in hell that guy should get on. <laughs> Flip side of that is you go, man, I can't believe this guy isn't in the hall. Or you've got somebody go, he's in the hall of fame and he deserves it. And I don't know what you guys are talking about. So give us give us your idea of what that is. What our own hall of fame. So give us an idea of what you think, what it should be. Um, this show runs because of opinion. Let's be perfectly honest. With you. Our opinions, your opinions. Um, there we try and throw as many facts in here as possible, but we use the facts to fuel opinion, which is I think what opinion, good opinion is. If you don't have a fact to back up what you think, you're just blowing smoke. So that's what we're trying to do is blow correct smoke that has something to back it up. But in honesty, we're just going didn't even want to think what he was going to think about that. Um, um, that on, Charles. <laughs> I, I know, we, have, we have a history that should not be anything to do with what's going on. <laughs> that's another story entirely. I don't even know. Was that college days? Or anything. Um, but the, the, the concept of <laughs> what we think is what we think. What you think is what you think. Hopefully, we influence you to think about more stuff, but we never want to make you think, well, I'm right, he's wrong, or he's right, I'm wrong. That's never the case. It can't be the case, or then why do you have your own opinion if you're going to let somebody else change your opinion? You know, make an informed decision, and then all of it. That's what we're trying to get. And get out and vote. Oh, sorry. Um, well said there, CS. Uh, 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 CS uh, Gordon uh, over there. Well said, CS. I'm ready, for, I'm ready for County Alderman uh, for the 18th Ward. Here, here. John, close the show so I can shut up. <laughs> well, no, that's true. And, and, and it, obviously it's opinion because we, everyone has one and everyone needs something. We can roll our eyes in an opinion if we want, but it, it, whatever, it is an opinion and it doesn't make you right. You might be right sometimes. Hell, we've been bragging about us being right and then, and then we can be flat wrong. And, and those are, we have a lot of, right, we have a lot of experience, to say the least, between the three of us of being boxing fans. And it doesn't mean we get it right. So every time, and, and that's the point, everybody can say or think whatever they want. This is America. So, yeah, I would love it if ah, some people gave their views on who should be in, who shouldn't be in very nicely, like you said there, FS, or no, CS, clean shaven. That's right. That's who you are. So uh, that would be great. I, I, I would love it for people to uh, engage more in the show and give us their uh, view on on things. And then anything else, too, like uh, what do you want to see in 2022? What are you looking forward to? Because we, we, it, it, the, the year in here has been great. I'm, I'm working on an article. It's like Boxing's March Madness in November and December. That's the way I've been seeing it. I mean, there have been so many interesting things going on. And and uh, so, yeah, let's 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 look to 2022 and, and, and try to see what we, we can get going there. And, we got a lot of influence, so let's let's see what we can do. Farmer? Yeah, I mean, I, I just, uh, I, I think I'm on the same accord as you guys. Uh, just want to move forward, make some great things happen, continue to provide uh, solid quality information uh, to people that are watching. Because that's the main thing, too. I mean, there are a lot of people out there providing their own uh, opinions, and we said everybody has them. But then we want to kind of look at it from a realistic standpoint of, not just getting caught up in today's boxing, but also bring you some history. So you understand uh, what's going on and what has happened in boxing. And then really recognizing how great the talents that we're watching are and be able to compare them from time to time, but also keeping it in the current state uh, uh, far as far as what we're talking about. So I think by, again, the fact that we've been doing this for this long and people continue to watch and pay attention and watch in other places too, I think it just throws out the, the, the whole gesture of boxing being dead because they're still spending money. People still watching pay-per-view. It's still going. And I think that if we continue to get more quality fights, now we got past that damn uh, uh, LBE, you know, entertainment type situation. We put that in its own area now so people can get off that drama. It's in its own pocket. We can get back to real damn boxing. I think that's very important because the, the, the people that watch or pay attention and view or what have you on whatever level, if it was me and I was watching, 
a show like this, I want the people to be on point and give me the best, uh, the best information possible, and also have a unique perspective. Because everybody, anybody can get on the, on the box and talk and just give, oh, are you crazy and all that. I mean, maybe we'll do that later. But right now, we're trying to bring it to you real, for you can give it and something. To think boxing about. time. Yeah, so bring it to you real because we want to have something to think about. Not about you agreeing with me or agreeing with Frank or agreeing with John. Just want you to open your mind a little bit and think about what what is your perspective on this and be able to back it up um, with with a, not so much an argument but at least uh, you know with 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 some information for those that 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 are uh, that are listening very closely and think that we just ramble on. That's called a, a hypothesis, an educated guess. Anyway, only that long. It's like using your articulation when necessary, but also using your uh, uh, your medulla oblongata when necessary. I'm gonna leave y'all with that. Thank you. <laughs> <a> pleasure. <laughs> that, that, that was my mind blown right there. Um, and my my motto is no parents allowed. Parents, parents. Meaning, if you don't have your own opinion, don't have it. if you want to spout somebody else's opinion, go spout it to them. Come up with your own ideas, your own thoughts, your own your own original concept. Of what's going on? Obviously, going to be influenced by a lot. But don't tell me blah, 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 blah. Why do you think that? Fuck the guy down the street. Like that? Then why am I not talking to the guy down the street? I want to talk to the person that came to me. As you said, using your own medulla. But, see, I used to be able to say that. I say that. And I well, you know what, Frank? I think real quick, I think that what Charles says is right on point, that even if we can make people maybe rethink their opinion by what we say, based on our, our knowledge and, and, and our own opinion, but based on facts, that's that's huge. You can do that, you can make someone, oh, wow, that was really a good point. That's that's what we, I think we're all striving for here. You know, that's important. And then you run into my police director. He said, not a ghost in the machine, but uh, anyhow. Um, here's how we look at we are three relatively intelligent people that have no skin color. Um, so we don't know that we're any smarter than we are, and we don't pretend to be any smarter than we are, because we're not. That's just, we talk about boxing and other things. We were talking about before the show. But under, understanding that we enjoy this, we have a good time, this is what the Ultimate Sports Network is about. So check us out. Check out the Ultimate Sports Network. Um, this, is, this is me now saying, and give us money. No, but the idea is to to enjoy your sports and to think about it in various different matters, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, soccer, tennis, hockey, whatever. Think about what you're enjoying. It makes that much more fun. When you decide to paint your face and go to the game, why? If you think about it and enjoy it, then there's a point in doing that and buying $75 or whatever. Now I enjoy it because I have a reason to there have fun enjoy yourself this is the world we live in hell we may all be inside again in another three weeks enjoy it while you can on that note thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> poke them if you got them Papa.